Stocks seeing a mild Thursday following Wednesday's big drop. Are the days of calm markets back already? Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi. Today we've got Chad Morganlander from Washington Crossing Advisors and Stacy Gilbert from Susquehanna. Stacy, I want to start with you. When you look at these markets, what are you thinking about the volatility here? Yeah, well, I think what's interesting about volatility, so for one, we obviously had one of the biggest pullbacks that we've had in eight months yesterday with the market, with the S&P 500 down 1.82%. So, but let's put this in perspective what this really means. I mean, it's been 172 trading days since we've seen a 2% or more pullback. We're not seeing volatility as much as yesterday's move or as much as Wednesday's move felt large. It was large just relative to what we have been experiencing. It really wasn't a crazy kind of move. We're in a market environment that's really waiting for information. The post-election rally has happened. Now, in order to get further growth, we need to see if there's going to be deregulation and tax reform. Those are two key points for the market to continue this rally higher. Obviously, yesterday's news and the news uh, this week really kind of made investors a little nervous that maybe this Trump agenda was going to get derailed and we weren't going to have it. But we just don't have enough information yet to know. So what we really see in the market here is we're going to be in wait and see mode, i.e. low volatility mode, until we have enough information to know if we're moving to our tail on the upside with reform, tax reform and pro-growth agenda taking hold, or if it's going to ultimately fail, if the administration is going to be entangled in so many different areas that nothing can get done, and then we're easily down 15 to 20 percent. But until we have that clarity, Unfortunately, we're in a low vol environment. Chad, is there anything wrong with low volatility? Maybe it's just the sign that it's a bull market. We know that markets rise slowly and they drop quickly. So low vol means stocks are going up. Is there anything wrong with that? Well, it is. There is something wrong with it when vet markets continue to glide higher without any real economic and major uh, earnings growth on a global basis. You had a bit of earnings growth nonetheless but it still doesn't justify valuations. I couldn't agree with Stacy Moore on the reality that, that, you're, that you have political risk that is coming into play here. The other two things I might add to it is you also have the ECB as well as the Federal Reserve. And as the Federal Reserve starts to increase rates, the cash market's going to become more attractive. The ECB is going to slowly start to pivot in 2018 and may signal that later this year that they're not going to be as accommodative. That as well can increase this volatility. The other component of it is the emerging markets. The global growth power has really come from the Chinese debt uh, credit machine. And as that starts to balance out, this synchronized trade that everyone's excited about because they believe that there's synchronized growth could start to untangle and unwind. Uh, so we would be a little bit more cautious at this point. Valuations are toppy. Uh, we would balance the portfolio out and not be as, uh, as aggressive. So you said that you agree with her on the concept of low volatility, but this is Trading Nation, so we need some disagreement here. So what can I get you guys yeah. to disagree on? Is it how long this low vol lasts? Is it what direction it's going to move from there in terms of just the overall market? What is something that maybe you guys think of that's a little bit more controversial that maybe the rest of the market is not seeing the same way? Well, I mean, from my perspective, an oh, air Stacey, you go. That's Sorry. even good. Now you're Sorry. talking over each other. It looks like a cable news show. <laughs> I know. Chad, listen, I'm going first here, all right? This is, we're going we're gonna to fight a little bit here. No, I, I would say one of the things where we may have a slight disagreement here is I actually think that the market is, we'll call it kurtotic. We'll make it, we'll kind of make a fancy word there. I think it has real tail risk, and I'm less concerned about our 5% moves. I think 5% moves probably continue to get bought. That's not an area that I'm ultimately concerned with with the market. I think that those are kind of expected. They're bought. My my concern is your 10 and 15 percent, if not 20 percent moves, and I think those go to either tail. So I think the shoulder parts of these distributions are a lot less than what we typically see, and I think the staying here, grinding back and forth is a much higher concentration than what we'd normally see. Now, Chad may actually agree with me on that, but I would say that's where I would say from a perspective of the market participants, I think we're a little different as this is why we're here because that's that part of the distribution. It's our tails that are actually fatter, and I like owning things that are going to get explosions with big, big moves. I think for me, the, Chad, fire, the reality fire is, 
The, the reality for me is that I'm looking at the big picture and I'm looking a little longer out and I'm saying to myself, how could China, which has been roughly the emerging markets growth, uh, has contributed to about three quarters of global growth, that has done, been on the back of a tremendous amount of, of, of credit. And I think that's going to start to moderate. And when that moderates, that's going to take a, take a, a put pressure on the entire financial system, not, on the, not only on the EM side, but also on, on the more developed side. And it's going to have a real impact on commodities. Now, I may be wrong for a year, but you know, similar to the financial crisis that took place uh, back in 2007, that started, the pressure started to build in 2003 into 2006. So this is the issue that I'm looking at. It's more of a long-term issue that could take that market down over 10%, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I also like that phrase that you said there, I might be wrong for you. Not a lot of guys on Wall Street have the luxury of being wrong for you, so hopefully you'll be able to ride it out no matter which way it goes. My thanks to Chad and Stacey. It's always good to see a little bit of a hedge. The less volatile the markets, the more volatile the segment. That's what we're looking for. Uh, thanks for watching Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.